So I recently worked on something called Devil Inside for director Toby Roberts. It's part of a horror anthology called The Haunted Hotel, which is being uh, made by Film Suffolk at the moment. And because it's essentially a short subject, I thought it was worth analyzing a little bit because the compositional approach is fairly simple, but it still is a narrative score, so it's pretty easy to see how the music works to support the film as a whole. The story concerns the remaining members of a group of criminals calling themselves the Deptford Eight. They've just committed a crime and have now gathered in a hotel room to split up the loot and successfully plan their next move when strange things start to happen. Or do they? Firstly, we had to introduce the characters before we get them into the room where the majority of the film takes place. Now, these were older guys, and they maybe were past their prime a little bit, but emotionally, they were still the tough men that they were in their youth, so the music had to sound like that had to be really rootsy and direct and no-nonsense. So I put together something and I restricted it to five parts to reflect the five members of the Deptford Aid all still working together. Once we get inside the hotel, there are essentially two other ideas that support the direction of the narrative. To begin with, I decided to base all this music on a 12-tone row. One of the first composers I had the good fortune to study with was Dr. Hugh Hartwell, and he gave me a really great idea about 12-tone composition, which I've used a lot over the years. Instead of being bound to the strict permutations of the row, you could come up with a group of notes that you like and then play around with them for a couple of days and explore all the different relationships between the degrees and the character of what you've come up with and then put the row aside and just write some music without looking at it so you're not influenced by anything specific but you are influenced by the actual character of the row. And to me, this makes perfect sense, especially if you're working with a narrative because naturally that's going to dictate where you have to go. Like Bill Conti says, you know, when the film moves left, you move left, and when it moves right, you move right. So for the first idea inside the room, because we are dealing with a slowly unraveling sense of reality, I wanted something that felt as though it was descending and the bottom was dropping out, whilst at the same time it was increasing in intensity. It was sort of something that was moving down and up at the same time. So playing around with the material from the row, I eventually settled on this. For the second idea, I wanted something that created a sense of freefall, something to support the sense of not knowing when something is real or not. So it had to have the feeling of just sort of floating there, not necessarily moving towards a resolution of something positive or negative, but just hazily floating there like a cloud. And again, it was material from the row that produced what I ended up using. These two ideas together were enough to support most of what develops in Devil Inside. The last aspect of the score to consider was the sound. From a production standpoint, we are fortunate enough now to really be in control of the space that music sits in. You know, if you want, you could have uh, something sound like it's in Westminster Abbey or a football stadium or anything you want. But for this, it's scored for a small group of instruments, and uh, because of the supernatural thriller nature of it, I wanted to purposely have a smaller sound, because a lot of the uh, television music I grew up on, um, from The Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits, uh, Laura Johnson scores to The Avengers and Thriller, they, they're all a smaller, intimate sound for not a lot of players. So I wanted to hearken back to that because it's a small setting and it almost feels more emotional to have something less than a big orchestral sound at all times to support the story. And also, it leaves room for the big scary moments which you have to have to sort of have more impact as well. Devil Inside was a lot of fun to work on. It's sort of in the spirit of the uh, portmanteau horror films that Amicus did in the late 60s and early 70s and I think it turned out really well.